These folks love their football in Seattle. This was the scene a moment ago as the home squad came out of the tunnel, and it was just absolutely deafening in this building. They're set for football. So are we as the Seahawks get set to match up with the Seattle Seahawks. And some changes here as the D-line separates some. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. And incomplete to open things up. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. He came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Offense looking to avoid a third and long at second and ten. Now Wilson going to throw again. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawk defense. Mike Bennett in there to sack him for a loss of six. Partner, I know the ball security is preached like crazy, but every now and then you've got to know when to get rid of the football and save a little bit of yardage if you're a quarterback. Because now if you're the offensive coordinator, what does it do ver if it was third and ten versus third and much longer as it is now? Yeah, it changes everything in terms of play calling and the pressure you might expect to face on the very next down. Had to throw the ball away and save the yardage. He didn't get it done. And that one incomplete. Had some position but couldn't hold on and it brings up fourth down. Brandon, it looked like he had his hands on it for a moment, but let, let's face it, that was going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, nice job to force the incompletion. They'll indeed go for it with Wilson. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by the all-pro free safety, Earl Thomas. And he'll wind up losing five yards or so on the return, but no matter, they've got the football back. Certainly. Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Anticipation is mounting for today's game, and we've got two quarterbacks 
looking to make an impact. It's Wilson Seahawks going up against Deshaun Watson's Texans. Thank you very much, Larry. EA Sports coverage of the NFL. The National Football League is here and on the air. The scene from a few moments ago, this crowd enthusiastically cheering on their Texans as they emerge from the locker room. And we're just about ready for football as the Texans get set to match up with Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. Watson on first down. His throw incomplete. The pro bowler DeAndre Hopkins, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. The effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch, but underthrowing balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. And this will complete to Will Fuller. Will Fuller, nobody there to stop him. Touchdown, Houston. Will Fuller, 75 yards. And the Texans have taken the early lead. Well, that's how they envisioned to get the football to start the game and score. And I don't know if that was scripted. Was it an audible? Or was it just a play call that they had in their pocket? No matter what, they had the right call on against the right defense, and they end up in the end zone. No return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. The wide receiver moving to a new spot. The former Gamecock here. This is Mike Davis. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. And when you're running the football, one thing you don't want to see is a big boy coming up there to swallow you whole in those D tackles and nose tackles. No, you're actually counting on your big boys to protect you from them. But on that play, the defensive tackle had the leverage, and he won the battle. No gain, correct? No gain. Flushed out right. And some room. And I think the ball's out. But this will get out of bounds, so possession will stay the same. Give him seven there on the tuck and run, and they're in better shape now for third. So the offense able to recover the fumble, but it's third down now. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. Third and two, now Wilson. Steps away to his left. Now he'll let it go on the run. Deep. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted. Torn back across his body. Picked off by Kareem Jackson. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. Charles, let's step into a conversation about Houston in 2017 as their offense comes back onto the field here. But just 1-9 in, in their last 10 games, finished 4-12. You and I know that injuries really ravaged this team. Absolutely destroyed this team. And look, we focus on Deshaun Watson, the quarterback, and, and rightly so. He was probably going to be the rookie of the year. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Bruce Ellington, 66 yards. And the Texans are able to show off their quick strike ability. I think if you pulled defensive backs, 
they would say the corner route, take that out, make it illegal, because that is so hard to recognize and so hard to adjust because your first move is to not get beat in the middle of the field. And that's how they move you first before they break off to the corner. But then as the wide receiver, great job. It's tough to turn those upfield and go, but he did a great job with it there. Really good balance, really good body control. And how about the end result? A touchdown. For the offense changes hands here, let's look back at the Super Bowl February 5th. What a game. I know you were there calling it offensively, though. Impressive on both sides. It certainly was, and let's face it, if you're in Minnesota, it's cold outside, but you talk about the offenses, they heated up in a big way. And how about Nick Foles? The backup quarterback turned MVP. 373 yards, three touchdowns, and of course, the big one receiving on the Philly special. Quite a story. As you and I were talking about off-air, it was just a fluid game, not a lot of penalties, just really clean play. Exactly the type of game the NFL needed for the audiences at home watching the game, and of course, people in attendance. A really well-played game. Now Wilson on second down. Space to maneuver at the 40. He's got his man on the crossing route. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Now Wilson on first down. Over the middle complete. That's Richardson. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. The 15 yards there on the scramble and a first down. They'll bring one of the tight ends in motion left. On the carry, it's Davis. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Ten more there and another first down. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter. And a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. On first and ten, it's Wilson. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It's going to be a gain of six on the keeper, but it leads to a third down. Partner, I know we're in the era of the mobile quarterback, but there's still an element of surprise when that position keeps the football, and what a nice gain on that play. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon hits the Seahawks with a football to begin quarter number two. They're on the march, but facing a third down here. In motion is the tight end, Graham. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up a fourth down. But forget knowing where the first down line was. This defense created their own line of scrimmage. They won every battle up front. And a lot of times that is one-on-one. -on -one. 
If you win your one-on-ones enough times, your defense is going to be pretty good. They had more people to the football and snuffed out the play. They'll run with Davis. And he will not even make it back to the line of scrimmage. Pete Carroll rolled the dice, but it didn't work out. And this Texans defense stands tall. Before the possession switches here, I had written down that I wanted to talk about some of the awards this past season in the NFL. We know Brady was the MVP, but Todd Gurley, Offensive Player of the Year. How about that for a bounce back? Many were questioning whether he'd had a sophomore slump the season before. Didn't even get to 1,000 yards. Was a dominant force in 2017. How about his teammate Aaron Donald on the yeah. defensive side? He took home Defensive Player of the Year award. Yeah, very impressive. They had both sides of the ball. Sean McVay deserving, I think you would agree, of Coach of the Year. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what he did for the Rams when they went from last in the league in scoring to leading the league in scoring and winning a division title. And how about the New Orleans Saints, Rookie of the Year, offense and defense. Alvin Kamara on offense, Marshawn Lattimore on defense. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. It'll be a two-yard gain, and it'll be a second down. Now it's Watson going deep for Hopkins. And it's intercepted. Picked off by the Pro Bowl safety cam chancellor. And he's able to get it back to right around the 27. CD, I want to get your thoughts on some potential free agents this offseason before we change the possession here. Now, caution, many of these guys could be resigned, I know, but who are some of them? Kirk Cousins is one. Yeah, we're talking about difference makers. Kirk Cousins at the quarterback position. He's going to be coveted around the league for, by quarterback needy teams. Case Keenum had a big year. Could he move? But how about running backs? Le'Veon Bell, Deion Lewis, some pass catchers, Jimmy Graham, Jarvis Landry, Sammy Watkins. And about the guy who goes and gets quarterbacks, Demarcus Lawrence had a monster year for Dallas last season. Yeah, a lot of big names that could be out there as free agents. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Richardson. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Play action. It's Wilson rolling to his right. And he's got Lockett. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Wilson to Lockett there for the Seahawk first down. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. They'll wind up losing four yards on the play. And it'll bring up a second and 14. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We're back to Houston after this timeout. On second down, here's Wilson. And he'll go out of bounds. It appears right at the 45. The reception good for seven. It's third down. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tap and foot drag. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Well, they'll get the yardage, but they hate to see him take that hit. You're always trying to cool off a big-time guy throwing the ball, but you have to know when to back off, pull up, and not hit him. There's the penalty. Now a play fake here on first down. Sliding out of the pocket. And some room to roam now. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Second and just one. Here's Davis now. And he'll go down at the 28. 
Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. This will be caught inside the 10. And he's going to be out of bounds, down inside the 5 at the 4. That one goes for 24 yards. Now they'll send a tight end in motion left. Now Davis. And he will take this one in for the Seattle touchdown. Mike Davis taking it in from four yards out. And the Seahawks able to make this a close game again. And that one makes it 14-7. Here's Walsh now to kick this one off. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. I want to give a hat tip real quick, Charles, to J.J. Watt before the possession switches here. Walter Payton, NFL Man of the Year. They totaled up how much he helped raise for hurricane relief, $37 million. Incredible. Hurricane Harvey, which really hit the Houston area in a big way, and his original goal was $200,000. So congratulations to J.J. Watt and all the people who participated. And Greg Olson of the Panthers, Benjamin Watson of the Ravens, both tight ends, also nominated and finalists for the most prestigious award as determined by the NFL, the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. First and ten, Watson, and no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense as he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. To throw on second is Watson, and he fires one that's intercepted. He's picked off just shy of midfield. And he will return this one to the 30-yard line. So the football switching hands here in just a second. And, you know, Tom Brady, just to go off on a tangent for a second, may have lost the Super Bowl. But third MVP this past season and what he did at age 40, really something, right, Charles? Absolutely phenomenal. Ended up beating out Todd Gurley, the running back for the Los Angeles Rams. But he would have traded it for a Super Bowl win, don't you think? How about this? The last nine NFL MVPs to play in the Super Bowl that same season, 0-9. Yeah. Going all the way back to Kurt Warner in, what, 1999, 1999 when he won the double? We were going over that stat earlier. That is hard to believe. But he would have been the MVP had the Patriots pulled that one out. Yeah, he still has five rings, though, five Super Bowl titles for Brady. here to the 31-yard line. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that's going to lead to a third and 11. Now it's Wilson. Looking for Lockett, and it's intercepted. Zach Cunningham with a pick. And the return here is stopped at the 35-yard line. You don't see this often. A quarterback of his caliber, two first-half interceptions. It's absolutely surprising because it happens so rarely. You're searching for what reason, what's going on out there. It's not just maybe the defense is playing well. Is this horoscope off? Is biorhythms? What is it? You went horoscope on us, David. Well, I was thinking maybe REM sleep was off. I'm trying to come up with something. <laughs> Anything, right? And it drops down incomplete. Thought he might have had it. Instead, second down. This secondary has been roasted in this first half, but they get a measure of revenge there. Nice play on the deep ball. Yeah, they're going to need a few more plays like that in order to get their confidence fully back, but that's one step in the proper direction. Going deep for Hopkins. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. It's the Pro Bowl quarterback, Richard Sherman, and his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. 
Charles, earlier we talked a lot about Russell Wilson. What a great job he did last year in 2017 as Seattle's offense is working their way back onto the field. But they're probably going to need to find a running game to alleviate some of that pressure on Wilson, right? Yeah, you think? I mean, my goodness, when you take a look at what Russell Wilson did, he more than doubled the rushing yardage of Mike Davis, who finished second. And Mike Davis didn't begin the year on Seattle's roster. They went through a number of runners. And Wilson's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Kareem Jackson. And he will be brought down as time has now run out on this first half of action. Welcome back. Charles and I settled into the booth ready for quarter number three. So both teams have their marching orders and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. And he's got some space here. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. They go again with Davis. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. To throw is Wilson, flush to his right, and some space here. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. The rushing numbers for Wilson, maybe down from earlier in his career, but he's still a threat to go, showing it there, picking up the first down. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. And they run with a backup. This is Thomas Rawls. And they'll get him down here at about the 42. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth so far. Four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. with Wilson. They set up the screen to Rawls. And oh, he is really laid out that time. Knocked flat on his back at the 38-yard line. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. On first down, Wilson. And he finds a man on the crossing route. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. Paul Richardson, 38 yards. And the Seahawks just an extra point away from tying this thing up. Now we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. First half showed us some pretty good offense. Tie game. We'll see what the second half brings. And it'll be interesting because I think both sides feel pretty good about what their offenses are doing. 
Got to wonder what adjustments are being made defensively to try and get a spark and maybe slow down the other side. But here, do you change up anything on this opening drive? Not offensively, you don't. You've got everything going your way. You've probably prepared for maybe some change-ups you might expect, but overall, you like what your game plan is showing you. Here's Watson. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. And now the Seahawks are going to take a timeout here on defense. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. A nickel look by Seattle on third down. Yep, five defensive banks now. To throw is Watson. Setting up the screen for Miller. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. And a screen only good for three that time, and it'll bring up a fourth down. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. And how about this one now? In their own territory, a gutsy call. They're going to go for this on fourth and a yard. Back to throw, Watson. It's hauled in by Ellington. And he is out of bounds on the other side of midfield. 16 yards on that one and also a Texan first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Come on, let's go. on first down, Watson being chased out left. And he'll get it down here to the 43. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Now, that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. On second down, here's Watson. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Ten yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. Caught. It's Ellington. And down inside the 15 he goes. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Back now at the home of Super Bowl 51 in RG Stadium in Houston. All square, 14 apiece to score as we get ready for the fourth quarter. And now inside the red zone, the offense will operate. A first down carry now for Miller. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Lamar Miller, 14 yards. And the Texans have taken the lead. And they're able to run it in. It started with a battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how are we going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. unit is out on the field and they will send this one away this fielded at the two 
And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. So second and ten here. From the shotgun, Wilson. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. Give him two yards on that play. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. From the gun, it's Wilson. Complete. Richardson has it. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. They give him a gain of 37. A lot of receivers see the drag route as a risk-reward type of a play. The risk, going into the middle of the field where there's some big people want to hit you. But the reward is oftentimes you get lost in coverage, running a little bit underneath. And when you catch it just right, as we just saw there, the end result can be a big, big play. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not only going to catch the football. He's going to run away from me a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. But the bottom line is he takes care of the ball well for them, so they'll keep handing it to him. And this is caught at the eight. 18 yards there, and it'll be a first and goal. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Well, they don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. It's a gain of a yard, and it takes us to the two-minute warning. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. They come out with one back and three tight ends. And he'll get this one back to the five-yard line, but no further than that. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. The offense on third down, they've hit at 50%. Three and six to this point. They're looking at a third and goal here. Rawls. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to bring up a fourth and goal. Brandon, it's easy to make decisions from right up here where we are, right in the cheap seats, but let's be frank about this one. This isn't even a decision as far as I'm concerned. They have to... And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Brandon Dunn coming up the middle, gets him there for a loss of about nine. Start out on the ground. It's Lamar Miller. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. A pickup of 11 and a Texans first down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, 
you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. They keep it with Miller on first down. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Wow, a personal foul at this stage in the fourth. Hard to believe. Really hard to believe. And now that glow of hope that you had begins to flicker out, doesn't it? Yep. After the penalty, it's Miller. And very little room to maneuver. He'll get this down to about the 39. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Second down following the run. Watson going to give this one to Miller. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Now it's Watson. Dancing to his left. And some room to maneuver. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. It's a win for the Texans as we say so long from Houston.
Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned in to the NFL on EA Sports. Ahead, we'll see two of the best in terms of patrolling the middle of the field. It's all pro linebackers Sean Lee and Bobby Wagner. All right, Larry. Somewhat surprisingly, the rain has held off. Just overcast skies so far as you get a look inside CenturyLink Field in Seattle. This crowd, as we've come to expect in recent years, as loud as any in the NFL, and they get even louder when their Seahawks are introduced. We're ready for football as the Seahawks get set to do battle with Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. The Seahawks' Blair Walsh is ready to roll, and off we go from Seattle. And that drives coaches insane, doesn't it? When they see that happen, it just, it just doesn't feel right, does it? Plus, you're giving up yardage. Try the sweep with Elliott. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. 2017 for Zeke Elliott. A mixed bag. Would he play? Would he not play? Well, he missed the six games from weeks 10 to 15. He still finished, though, Charles, 10th in the league in rushing. Just tells you about the talent that he has and how explosive he is and what he brings to the table. Look, he averaged 98 yards per game, 98.3 to be exact, a full 11 yards higher the number two Todd Gurley behind him. So I just tell you, if he plays a full season and he's averaging that type of yardage, I think Dallas's win numbers go up. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them. And a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. Yeah, and that was a safety that came through and made the play. But there's no doubt in my mind, he hits like a linebacker. And we see a lot of that in today's NFL, don't we? And that time we do indeed a big hit for a loss. Here's Prescott. Drops it underneath, Elliott. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. I'm not sure that this play was designed for him specifically, but they got through the progressions and got the ball to him. So second catch on the drive. He may not be a primary guy, but they definitely want him involved, don't they? Absolutely. This early, the opening drive, as you said, two catches. So if they can get him going to the passing game, that should open up his running game, too. A gain of six there on first. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. On second down, Elliott. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. That's his longest run of the first quarter. And, Charles, we talked before the game about them needing to establish the run game. They'll be looking for more of that. 
and they got to the perimeter. So that tells me that that's part of the game plan of what they want to get done today. So they'll have some complimentary runs where he'll run it to the inside. But it appears that when they want the big yardage, they think they can get to the outside and make it happen. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. They'll pitch it out to Elliott. And they'll go backwards here, losing yardage to the 14. He lost two there, and it's third down. I'm no offensive mastermind, but of all the guys on the field to block, you might want to stop him. Look, I've got a very simple rule. An unblocked defender is usually your best defender, and he ended up making the play there. Now they're coming up on play number eight of this opening drive, but they're looking at a third and long. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. And he's going to go down. He's sacked back at the 24. Cliff Averill in there to drop him for a loss of 10. And it'll be fourth and long. Fourth down, Prescott. Try to get it to Williams, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Brad McDougal. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. And yeah, the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. And tough starting field position here. This is the Oklahoma State alum, Chris Carson. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. The best play callers in any league know how to break their tendencies. They study themselves, they self-scout, and they realize most of the time you don't call a draw play on first and ten. So every so often you insert that play just to make the defense think, even if it's not successful. Throwing is Wilson. In trouble, and the ball's out. It's in the end zone loose. And the Cowboys have re And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. Now Elliott. And he will take it in for a Cowboy score. Ezekiel Elliott taking it in from four yards out. And the Cowboys have taken the early lead. Solid job up front. Really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. Yeah, that was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run. End result, six points. Touchdown. Dan Bailey now for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-0 Cowboys. Kick this one away. Tyler Lockett now with a return. And he'll get it up just past the 20, and his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. 
And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions, but some are worse than others. So you can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense, but when you turn it over, it changes momentum, and then they take it downfield and punch it in on you. That's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon hits the Seahawks with a football to begin quarter number two. They've got it second and ten to start things out. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. It's a loss of two. Now third down. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. On third down, Wilson eluding the pressure right. He's going to let this go deep, back over the middle. So they took it. Now it's four. The best receivers we know always tease their quarterbacks that, hey, no matter what you do, 